going on guys? Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and I don't need these headphones. But uh, this week, uh, on your D&D update, we've got a little bit of Wizards of the Coast news, some funny weird spell stuff, some new materials have come out, a couple of cool new Kickstarters, and uh, some updates from us as well. So, stay tuned. Alright, so let's jump in. We've got here, there was a sage advice, the rules answers here for January of 2016. Uh, we get, this is one of the monthly articles we typically get. We usually get on our Tharkana towards the beginning of the month and the rule answers closer to the end of the month. Um, this one was, I didn't really think this was necessary. I thought the player's handbook explained this pretty well in my opinion, but um, it's all about AC. That's the big function is Again, I feel like it's pretty well outlined in the other the multi-classing section, but some of you guys may be unaware, so I'll just kind of quickly go through this. Um, you're not wearing any armor whatsoever. It's 10 plus your dex mod. You're wearing armor. The armor alters the way that formula works. If it's light armor, it's 11 or 12 plus your dex mod. If it's medium armor, it's somewhere in the 12 to 15 range, and it adds your dex mod, but it only adds a max of 2. So even if you have a 20 dex and you're wearing medium armor, you're still only adding two of that dex bonus to the armor bonus that it provides. So if it's half plate, that's 15 plus your dex mod of two. That makes your armor can only be 17, when in reality it will also be 17 wearing light armor. Uh, that is changed if you take the medium armor master feet, that bumps it up to a three. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, if it's heavy armor, it just sets it at that number. So if it's chainmail, your AC is just 16, it ignores your dexterity completely. That's why a lot of characters like heavy armor clerics or paladins or even some fighters tend to just dump dexterity as one of their stats. Maybe keep it in the positive realm so that when they have to go to roll for an attack, or I'm sorry, for initiative, then they're not completely at a loss or if they're gonna use a ranged weapon that's not thrown like a bow or something, they at least have something in the positive so they're not in the worst shape. Um, unarmored defense for a barbarian, 10 plus your dex mod plus your constitution modifier. Monk is 10 plus your dex mod plus wisdom uh, modifier. Draconic resilience, which is the dragon sorcerer, that just makes your AC 13 plus your dex mod. Uh, and natural armor, if you have access to something, is 10 plus the dex mod plus whatever the natural armor bonus is. That's not something players typically have access to. That's something that monsters, whether it be plated, uh, like an Umber Hulk's plates or or just natural armor for like a wolf or a bear or something to that effect uh, And then there's a bunch of things here that talk about combining things. I'm just gonna not even gonna read it I'll glance over it None of those uh, most of those don't stack you can't have unarmored defense from bon uh, monk and barbarian and have dex plus con plus wisdom Anything with the same name or the same kind of bonus does not stack uh the Draconic Resilience from a Sorcerer, 13 plus your dex mod. You cannot wear armor with that and then have that stack as well. Uh, the only things that kind of negate or go around that bonus are things that just give you a plus to your AC. Something like a Ring of Protection, something like a Cloak of Protection, a Shield just gives you a solid plus two. Spells like Shield of Faith give you a plus two. A uh, spell like Shield gives you a plus five. Those are all separate things caused from separate sources that will stack. If you are wearing a shield and you cast shield on yourself, that will increase it again by, you know, plus two from the shield, a momentary plus five from the shield spell. Someone also cast shield of faith on you to add another two that would again stack that way coming from multiple sources. Two rings of protection will not give you a plus two because it is the same source. A uh, ring of protection and a cloak of protection, however, will. It is a different source. Um, mage armor, again, acts almost identically to the Draconic Resilience. That is also a similar thing. Casting mage armor, making your AC 13 plus your dex mod, will not stack with armor. It will stack with the shield, it will stack with the shield spell, and so on and so forth. Draconic Resilience, armor, mage armor does not stack with a barbarian uh, or a monk's unarmored. Uh, the spell Bark Skin, which sets your AC at a 16 does not make your AC any higher than that. It means your AC cannot be lower than a 16. So if you cast Bark Skin on yourself, but you're already wearing plate armor, and your plate armor makes your AC higher, Bark Skin is still there on you. 
It just means that if somebody somehow destroys your plate armor and you are no longer armored, your AC cannot go below a 16. So you still have a 16 AC rather than you might have had a 10 or something otherwise. Um, again, plus one chainmail gives you AC 17, plus one ring protection gives you plus one. Uh, bracers of defense don't work with that because bracers of defense work when you're not wearing any armor or wearing a shield. Um, shield and, and shield spells and things like that stack with cover. If you're behind half cover, that's a plus two to AC. Three quarters cover is a plus five. Those stack as well. Um, again, most of the stuff I just went through. Unarmored defense work with mage armor. No, it doesn't. One or the other. Um, can you extend armor? This was another one I thought. You cannot extend armor of Agathis by gaining temporary hit points. If you had, I believe it says basically you can't, you basically, you can't refill it. That's kind of the functionality of Armor of Agathis. It's not nearly as good as you would think. Um, uh, temporary hit points aren't cumulative. Uh, temporary hit points from Heroism, even though it says that you gain your temporary hit points each round, it does not stack, it's not a cumulative bonus. Uh, makes sense, it would make Heroism a super awesome first level spell if your, if your temporary hit points continue to stack. I played in the game, the DM made that as the ruling, I ran with it because that was awesome. Um, sage advice information. Okay, moving on real quick, this is just a real quick thing here. Uh, here's some maps from, uh, just work, there's some images showing the work that has been done on maps for Curse of Strahd, the upcoming D&D game, uh, out in just a little over a month and a half. Uh, we knew that the Taraka deck was going to be coming out, we know that it is extremely important uh, for the, well, the way Curse of Strahd works. It's not necessary by any means, however it will allow you to alter the way the game is played and have it constantly shift. Uh, you want to get your hands on the Taraka deck, 4054 card adventure supplement, Gale Force 9, uh, randomized locations within the adventure, customized parties exploration. Uh, it also includes rules for Prophet's Gambit, a card game for 3-5 to five players. And it's only going to be 10 bucks, and it's coming out soon, before the game, or at least a long launch with it. I will be getting this. Um, I'll be at least going over how Prophet's Gambit works. I don't want to spoil things in Out of the Abyss, or um, Out of the Abyss, Out of Curse of Strahd, because I would like to play it myself, or at least run it. I don't know if I'm going to have the opportunity to do so, just because I'm involved in so many different D&D-related tasks at this point anyway, but we'll see what happens. Uh, what was this? WizKit's event system. I don't even know why I opened this. Um, but anyway, here's the WizKids event system. If you're looking to join any WizKids related things, this would be... There's also a ranking, which I didn't know was a thing for D&D. &D? This has got to be like Dice Masters or Heroclix or Attack Wing. But anyway, if you're looking to find a WizKids event near you, in your area, you can go to uh, WizKidsEvents.com and look up your local stores. Uh, again, they show that Heroclix is now playing on Geek and Sundry uh, every Friday. So if, you, if you're interested in things like Dice Masters or Attack Wing, um, you can check out the official tournaments here as well. Uh, give it a shot. I'm actually thinking about looking into... I have Attack Wing. I have the base set. And right now I've only been using the blue, red, and gold dragons just as minis within the game. I actually haven't played the game itself and I'd like to get into do to do that but I feel like it might be better for me to hands-on uh, play it in a store or watch it play to figure that out okay we've got another geek and sundry five ridiculous d d spells to goofify your game um, a lot of these do you know snillock snowball swarm friends vicious mockery glibness uh, so there's a couple of spells here these are d d 5e spells What's interesting is I learned a lot just about old school D&D, &D, like Snillox Snowball Swarm. Uh, that's because one of the designers' name was Collins, uh, and you see it's Collins backwards. Talked about other things I never knew, like Melf was because Gary Gygax's son was playing a male, uh, male elf character, and he just switched them together and made Melf. Just like Drawmage, which is some of the instant summoning spell, uh, was played by designer Jim Ward, which is just Drawmage. Jim Ward backwards is Drawmage. I know that was a Gary Gygax way to go about it if you didn't know what to do is just reverse uh, your name, which has some really cool effects based on certain names. Other names, like Ted, becomes Det, and it's not nearly as cool as something like Rodney becomes Yendor. 
something like that. Um, a little bit of interesting stuff, and then there's also some really funny old school AD&D spells like Sticks to Snakes and Guys of the Yak Man. Uh, the links will be in the description, of course, you can go ahead and check this stuff out. Uh, what do we got here? Mike Drucker's on the D&D podcast talking about what it's like to play with comedians. Um, he was writer for tonight's show. His impressive resume, host Trevor, blah, 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 blah. Shailen has noble, Greg Tito. They talk about what it's like playing D&D with comedians. You can check that out on iTunes. Uh, this sweet mimic dice pouch uh, exists. I didn't even know. I mean, we've seen some cool stuff like the... Uh, the Mind Flayer bag, and on uh, We Love Fine, they have the Beholder dice bag. I like this Mimic one. I think it's pretty cool. It looks like there's a little loop that just kind of slips around there. I'm not sure the exact size. It is uh, $17 uh, on Ultra Pro's website, so you can go ahead and check that out. Uh, there's This This has been circulating around for a while. Uh, I just came across this, um, the actual post here on Geek & Sundry. Uh, again, it's just a really funny thing about... My friend came into our weekly session with a new cleric. When I asked him to heal me, he handed me this, and it's a cleric heal form where you basically fill out all this information, allergies, all... It's, it's pretty funny. Um, you could definitely incorporate it into your game if you're a more prim and proper cleric and want to cover all of your bases. Um, but you should definitely check it out. It's pretty funny, the stuff that's written in there. This is something else that I wanted to go into. Uh, as you know, I'm a fan of Kickstarters, I'm a fan of Dungeons & Dragons, and when you put the two together, I'm also a huge fan. So this is 5th uh, Edition Familiars, Monstrous Companions, Steeds, and More. This is by Steven Chenault. I don't know if there is a title uh, name of the gaming company that it's on. Uh, essentially, they are Troll Lord games, it looks like. Um, they are, I pledged $20, so I have pledged on this myself. They are looking for $13,000. They have $3,000 of that already made, 72 backers with 30 days to go. Uh, I do like supplemental D&D stuff. This is really, this takes me back to old school D&D. Um, right, old school, I'm saying 3.5, not, not AD&D, but adding more companions and, and things like that to the game that were not that are not currently there uh things like more useful different familiars that actually do uh have more functionality in the game uh making a paladin steed via fine steed more powerful perhaps a new sword and that's actually almost a companion for your paladin or your fighter one of the cool concepts they have in here is the rogue shadow um, becomes their companion, sort of Peter Pan style, which I thought was kind of neat. Uh, Rogue's own shadow, unleashing the power of the only reliable pan companion a rogue can have themselves. Uh, Assassin Reaper, Totem and Animal Spirits for the Barbarians, a bard has their muse. Cleric Familiars, which is interesting. Druid Elemental Companion and Familiars. Monks Ancestral Familiars. Paladins Mountain Spirit Familiars. So on and so forth. Um, Homunculi for Wizards. And basically, the lowest level you can... Um, I, I don't know. I'm very interested in this. I'm going to reach out to the folks at Troll Lord Games to see if we can't get any more information for those of you that are curious. Uh, they do a fairly good job explaining it here. Maybe we can get a stack lock or something. Um, I'll see what I can do. No promises on anything. But $20 will get you the PDF version of the book. Um, I was going to go... It's normally going to retail for $28. It'll get you it for $20. If you go up to 35, you can get a hardcover, actual print version of the book. I do like having tactile things, but uh, it's going to normally be $39. You're going to save five bucks. I don't know. The thing is, like, I don't know how much information is going to be in this to know if I want a um, print book. Tome of Beasts, for instance, is 400 plus monsters and a whole other book of layers and maps. 400 monsters, and I've seen they showed some of the previews of what some of the monsters are going to look like. It's it's like another monster manual. I'm going to want that in print. This, I don't know how much information is here. Um, is there... Give, show me a block. Give me a stat block of something. Even a portion of a stat block for one companion of one type. Just give me something so I know what I'm getting myself into. Uh, $59 gets you both. 69 gets you the PDF and the hardcover print 
also a pack of familiars for Re from Reaper Minis. Um, again, I have to do a review. I just ordered some more Reaper Mini stuff. It's going to be... They have a couple of familiar packs on their website. Uh, I'm going to assume that that means some of those familiars will make their way into the game itself. You also receive the 3D print files for pig-faced orcs and lizardmen, 10 in all sent to you in STL format from Fat Dragon Games. With this, we'll also include the adventure module AO Knights Rising print and digital. That's not a bad deal. That's oh, that was sixty nine dollars. So you get um, you get a print and digital adventure module, as well as STL files to print these things. I don't know how useful pig faced orcs and lizard men are. If you have a three D printer, that might be something worth looking into. Uh, there's a retailer one. One hundred and twenty dollars gets you uh, print and hardcover. Uh, you also comes with a leather bound um, hardcover book. Again, something I would like to see before I go and drop 120 bucks. 135 gets you uh, the collector's leather edition. With this, you'll also get two packs of Reaper minis. You'll receive the STL files. You'll also get again the print and hardcover of the AO uh, Knights Rising. And for the grand total, highest backer amount for a hundred and fifty dollars you will receive both hardcover, PDF versions, you'll also get the leather edition, the two packs of Reaper Minis, the STL file, and uh, the adventure module. But what come, what's more, you can tailor your own companion slash familiar for inclusion in the book. The submission must be made by March 31st, 2016 to be included in subject to approval. Your name will appear in the credit for the book. Uh, 150 bucks. That's pretty cool, but it's what do you want me to do as far as uh, I guess maybe this is something you'll find out if you go if you go into it it's tempting um, but at the same time if this was an, like an official D d thing I jump on that because then it's gonna be officially printed but again it's a fan created thing if you're already gonna go to the effort of creating a fan built familiar or something like that maybe just do it yourself and release it in the dm's guild because that's a thing you could do and then you could make money on it again i don't know what kind of systems they have in place for this but i don't know there's already two people already backed that so i guess we'll get to see i'm not sure what i would want to add as a familiar or companion first thing that jumps to mind would be a phoenix companion would be pretty sweet but i just reread harry potter so that's probably why that's coming to mind uh, and I'm a fan of 3.5, giant alligator, giant crocodile, animal companion was my favorite thing. So I guess I'd go for that, but I don't know, again, how it works in the functionality of their, uh, their system. So anyway, go ahead and check this out. 20 bucks will get you it at the very least. These guys could use it. They're looking for 13,000. I don't know, uh, how much, I don't know if that's a lot. Uh, it feels like a lot to me for this, but maybe I'm wrong. But I mean, they're already three grand in so good for them um quick update from me uh, i know i've mentioned this before i am apparently the face of several of these videos roll for roll is a rpg dungeons and dragons fifth edition playthrough that i'm playing with uh, a handful of other youtube twitch people kugo the mighty uh light nevea a handful of the solen tusk and, and gozira here the the group of us are all playing this. Gozira is DMing for us. It's great. He's doing accents. We've got music playing. Um, it's very roleplay driven. Uh, if you're curious to see kind of who we are, if you don't know, you can check right here for the Meet the Players. And there's seven episodes. We started off with 28-minute uh, episodes and like around 30. We jumped up to an hour and a half. There are seven episodes released. Um, I have a great time playing it. It's one of the first times that I've been able to actually play in a game. Uh, for a very long time in a game where role-playing is heavily uh, heavily in uh, you know uh, emphasized I should say um, we have since again these were these are releasing episodes are releasing on Monday Wednesday and Friday uh, we recently just filmed a we've wrapped all of season one uh, so it's just editing now and getting the videos to come out uh, so we just did a finalization and kind of a look back Q&A session um, amongst us, you know, what we would have changed, what we like, what we didn't like about season one, and we are actually going to start filming season two next week, so we don't have plans to stop for anytime soon, and I hear there's potential we might even turn this into a live stream in the future, but for right now, season one and season two will be in recorded 
uh, functionality, so we'll see how that goes. Um, Alright, so I just figured I'd let you guys know because uh, it means a lot. I have a great time uh, running it. The channel is fairly new, um, but if you guys like me, like what I do here, like D&D, like role-playing, um, I would love if you would just head over to the channel. It's uh, roll for roll on uh, roll r o l l four f o r roll r o l e on YouTube. Again, there will be links in the description so you can find the channel. Um, and and if you like, uh, if you're a Twitter user, it's roll number four roll on Twitter. We post a lot more updates and things there. Um, if you want to follow it there, but yeah, just go ahead and check out some of the videos. I would recommend. Um, Obviously watching the whole series, but if you want to want to get an idea more about what the show is about um, and you just want to kind of see if you like the personalities and stuff, I'd go for more of like the episodes 5, 6, and 7 just because some of the a lot of the other folks that are playing um, are fairly new to Dungeons & Dragons, so they're not like really familiar with roles and terminology and things like that in the beginning. That changes towards the end, uh, obviously, as we get more into it. Uh, and then everybody kind of starts to warm up to one another, get into their characters more. Um, I'd recommend episode 6, actually, as a good place to start. Um, just to kind of get an idea for, you know, what the show is about. And if you like it, then go back and by all means watch from the beginning. But episode 6 is a good starting point. Um, and lastly, we've mentioned this before, Matthew Mercer, the Dungeon Master of Critical Role, is doing a weekly series to help Dungeon Masters out. He's already released two episodes. This one here is the third. This is all about preparing for the unexpected. And uh, again, it's kind of a silly concept, but it's very important, as you know, as, as anybody that's ever DM'd. Your players are going to derail you completely. You're going to need to try to get everything back on track. It's interesting to try to come up with a video to tell you how to prepare for the unexpected if it's unexpected. But he does a great job telling you things like, you know, coming up with extra NPCs, name lists, and things like that you can just reference off to the side. Um, like you need a name for an NPC, you need a character class, a flaw, whatever you need. Just have like a, a list that you can just jump to and then make sure you write that down in case something happens, you can pull them in. You, you know, you don't like plan for your players to run into somebody or actually talk or go into this building or something like that. And then they end up doing that. So then it's on you to kind of make something up on the fly. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, thank you again for checking out this D&D update. Um, there's going to be a handful of stuff coming out in the next couple of days. Uh, I'm working on trying to film some other stuff. I uh, picked up a few new uh, aids and things. I've been going out and buying all sorts of weird little animal stuff to make extra minis. Um, I just started getting into personally buying just flat bases for minis that don't have the minis attached to them and then just like taking other things that I've had around the house to make my own minis. So I might just do a very short update, um, maybe even like a D&D &D 101 stuff for the DMs. Um, because if you have things like Legos or Heroscape figures or, or Mage Knight figures or whatever you want to change them out, um, or Hero Clicks figures or whatever, you can just buy a bunch of bases really cheap and then just get a little hot glue and a little paint and you're ready to go. Um, but yeah, so you can click right up here at the top. This is our Tuesday D&D uh, playthrough. Our most recent episode was pretty crazy. Uh, going through the mountains, there were some avalanches, people possibly falling off of mountains to their death, attacks from dragons and things in caves and people falling down pits and almost dying in bottomless pits. All sorts of crazy stuff going on. Giant spiders, cave roper things, nuts. Worth checking it out. Uh, Clyde came back, so we've got our whole party for that episode. Down here in the middle, we started, uh, we restarted our Princes of the Apocalypse playthrough. This does live stream every other Thursday uh, for about two or three hours on our Twitch channel. Uh, this episode is from two weeks ago. This, by the time this comes out, the coming Thursday at around 9 p.m., we will be streaming yet again. Uh, you can check that out there. Just hit level three, so the actual main campaign is about to get underway. Um, so hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. And down the bottom is our discussion show. 
Uh, this takes place after our Tuesday game up the top here. That takes place after that. We kind of, it's like a D&D podcast. We typically have a topic. We are always looking for topics from you guys. So please, if you have any ideas for things you'd like us to discuss, let us know. Uh, this one here is on feats, uh, all about how the feat system works in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. Ones that are worth taking, ones that look like worth taking, but are actually traps, and ones you should probably just avoid altogether. Good builds and things related to that as well. Um, typically we just bullshit about stuff, but if, uh, if we've got something interesting to talk about, we also might be, uh, I'm working on, I think we're gonna be debuting a brand new Tome of Beast Monsters on our Tuesday episode, and soon, hopefully, We'll be debuting Lairs from the Tome of Beast uh, Book of Lairs as well, so be on the lookout for that. Anyway, guys, I hope you have a great week. Uh, Start of February already. Where the hell did January go? Um, Pretty soon it'll be Valentine's Day, and then pretty soon we'll have Curse of Strahd out, and then it'll be convention season. Uh, Maybe I'll see some of you guys out there. But anyway, uh, happy gaming. Have a great week, guys, and I will see you next time.